This is the Cuisinart WAF 150 Deep Pocket Four Slice Square Waffle Maker. It has a great build quality. I mean, look how deep these pockets are. This is nonstick. I hardly ever have to spray it no matter what I make. And we will be making different things in this because most people don't use their waffle makers for just waffles anymore. I see recipes all the time on TV or on YouTube for people saying, hey, make this and this. So we're going to make a couple different things. But first, it's got a solid build quality. I mean, this lid is heavy. The handle does not fluctuate. It does lift up a little bit so you can actually get some more stuff in there, but it doesn't break the seal. It might leak a little bit, but I mean, you still get your shape out of it. It has the the one two three four five darkness level it has a red indicator light here and a green ready to go or the food's done indicator there that's pretty much the basics of it so the four things we're going to cook is mixed lunch meat and cheese pockets out of biscuits for the kids quesadillas if you can call them that with chicken and cheese hash browns with the leftover mixture from the lunch meat and cheese and then of course we're going to get to the waffles which is the big to do that'll have a darkness of one three and five if you do if you do want to get one of these for yourself though, there is a link in the description from Amazon. I will make a small commission if you use that link though. Let's get to the cooking. I've already rolled out the biscuits. They're starting to fall apart, but you kind of just put them in there in the middle. And I sprayed it with a little spray as you saw. And then we're going to take our little mixture right here, put some in the middle and then cover it with another biscuit so an eight pack of biscuits will make four of these for the kids and then just close it up now that it's preheated you have to squish it a little bit and we'll lock it in all right so it turned green again let's see how it turned out oh wow now this is on three this might actually be a little too much. I might have to turn it down some. No, they're done. But we'll still turn it down a little just so they're not so crisp. And let's try it on about two and a half. All right, throw the second one on. I actually like trying to do mine in the four squares since it's not a round one. But I couldn't get them. They either overstretched or they didn't stretch enough. I might try to get the other ones in the squares. Let's go ahead and squish this one down. And as you can see, it actually, because of that perforation, it allows them to cut them, you know, you could cut them like that and they're still sealed in there. All right, that one seemed to take a second longer. That one turned out a whole lot better color-wise though, and I like the way that the squares turned out. This time we're gonna try to make them like I normally like to make them. I tried rolling them out a little more so I could get them in the squares and fold them over and see how they do. But who knows, it might not work. Only when they squish, they're in the actual squares. Sometimes I can get them to work, sometimes I can't. Ow, that was a little hot. All right, let's see how they turn out. All right, those are done. Oh, this turned out nice. And see, this is the way I usually like to make them. So they're little, you know, like sandwich squares. Now with the quesadillas, having them in the middle is okay. But I like having them like this. Let's cut one open and see what it looks like. There you go. All right. So let's go on to the next one. What I did for the quesadillas is, is I took some rotisserie chicken that we had had left over and I peeled it. It's mainly white meat. And I added some shredded Colby cheese. Colby Jack, I think. I'm actually not sure. I grabbed it, forgot to look. 
but I do believe it's a Colby Jack. Now this one, you have to put in the middle. One, because you can't really put them in the corner. And number two, because you want that center sealed. But we're going to do the same thing we did with the other ones. Get it to lock like that. And as you can see, this thing actually does do a pretty decent job with handling a, a thick amount of stuff. So, you know, it still will seal for the waffles as you'll see a little bit might come out but it, it stays pretty tight i mean it's not going to have a gap in the waffles but because there's such deep pockets you can squish a lot in here when it locks all right well that yeah that's going to need more two and a half doesn't work for these let's turn this one on four all right just clicked off saying it was four i'm gonna say that's probably done we'll check to see how they look in a minute Go ahead and throw another one on there. I'm going to put less on this time. Ooh. Just to let you know, this top being stainless steel will get a little bit hot. Not burnt hot. The sides might burn you. I'm used to it, but. All right, so for this last one, I'm gonna turn it all the way. Well, maybe I got two more. But I'm gonna turn it all the way up. So that we can see, because one, it doesn't seem to be uh, as crispy. But number two, so we can see what kind of setting a five will do for a quesadilla. Alright, so that was on five. I even left it a couple minutes over. You can see it did brown better. Alright. Oh, we got one more quesadilla. Hopefully. I done made a ton of these things. Alright, there's the quesadilla. We are going to go ahead and get to number three, and then we'll get to the main event, which is them waffles that I'm getting ready to make. Alright, so for the hash brown test, I actually had bought a brand new bag of hash browns O'Brien, but I think it's in the deep freezer and I can't dig it out right now. So, I'm going to take the bag I already had, and I wanted to do it two different ways. Regular hash browns, and then we're gonna do with the leftover lunch meat and cheese from our stuffed sandwich uh, test. And we're gonna go ahead and spread this out and make my wife some breakfast. And then maybe later I'll dig out the other bag and we'll do some more hash browns. Okay, well I was trying to make the hash browns on number five, which was taking forever, but I think they're getting kind of burnt anyway, and they're not holding together like I thought they were going to. Maybe the shredded ones I saw the person do was a whole different story. These little chunked ones though. But I mean, I guess they don't have to be solid. It's just the fact that you cook them in there and stuff. I don't know. But with having the cheese and all the other stuff in there, they're going to over burn anyway. So, that's how the hash browns turned out. Now i got to clean this mess up. We're not going to make the other hash browns. I might make some shredded ones after I use the mandolin, which is another review to go ahead and shred the potatoes. So maybe with a mandolin video we'll test it out or I'll make a separate video. But this didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. But you guys see how I, 
my experience. So we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is the waffles. All right, so now we are at the waffle section, the part you guys have been waiting for. We are gonna start with a number one, then we'll go to a number three, then we'll go to a number five. I did let it cool down for a few seconds, but it's already back at green. And just to let you guys know, it's not a danger or anything, but these things do get a little bit pliable and stuff after you use them for a minute. So just let you know to keep an eye on the cord, make sure it's not, you know, getting too loose for a second. I have found different ways to pour this in here. I actually have a bottle, which I can't use because there's characters on it. But uh, it can't be on the video. But um, it, I use it to shake it up and actually pour it in, and it makes perfect little circles for the kids. But when I try to make it where it's going to be a square like it should be, I go ahead and use the ladle, even though it sticks some. So we're going to put that on. All right, so this is going to be our number ones. They don't really get all that hard or all that dark, obviously. They're number ones. Um, and I'm not always good at making pancake batter or waffle batter, so that might partially be my fault. But that's how our number ones look. Let's go ahead and try some number threes, which is what I usually cook all of ours on. We'll see how they turn out. Might have to make more for the number fives. You see how that ladle allowed it to get a nice big square though. Well, I guess I didn't make enough. Normally make too much. We'll make more and come back. We will get enough out of it though for this. Maybe. Oh well. I'm going to go make some more for the number fives while this cooks. Alright, so it went green, letting me know that the number threes are done. See, this is what we normally have them as. And okay, they didn't have full squares, but that's still pretty good I got out of it. And you can see how much better they are. So it wasn't my batter. The number ones are just that. Loose. I don't ever make them on number one. All right, and I've made some new batter, so let's go ahead and I'm going to spray it just a second, even though it kind of came out. It's getting hot, and it's about to get hotter with the number fives, so let's pour some in there. Still didn't make enough. Hopefully that won't affect it since this is going to be open, but you can at least see what a number five comes out like. Turn it up. Close it up. Alright, it says the number fives are done. That doesn't look like number fives to me. It doesn't look much different than number threes. Uh, we're going to leave it in just a little bit longer because I, I don't think... Okay, it doesn't seem to be changing. I'm wondering if it's because I didn't make four. I'll just move it to here and see if that changes the heat. Hmm. Well, they are, they are like stiffer. I don't know. I think the threes turned out darker. Well, I don't think the food turned out too bad. If you like the waffle maker and want to get one for yourself, like I said, there's a link to Amazon in the description. I will make a small commission. And if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing because next week I'm doing a review on a Presto griddle and some accessories, a cover, egg rings, and a meat press. And that preview is on your screen right now. If the video is already out, YouTube's going to have it up on the screen. If not, they're going to have something else you're going to enjoy. So I will see you next week.